<clears throat> so I was watching a uh, an NBA video the other day, and the the title was something like six free agents nobody's talking about. And I, I was like, great, this, uh, I, I want to know who nobody is talking about. And I look, up, I look at the video and it had like Victor, Victor Oladipo and uh, Kyle Lowry. Uh, and I'm like, Every, everybody's talking about these players. So I want to do a video that people actually aren't talking about, players that people aren't talking about. So uh, that is today's video. And the guy who, I don't know why they're not talking about this guy. I think he's probably the best center that is going to be a free agent uh, this year in this free agency class, Rashawn Holmes. And you're saying, Troy, why are you starting a video talking about Rashawn Holmes? He's going into his prime uh, as far as age is concerned. Late 20s, just finished a season where he averaged almost 15 points a game, like seven, eight rebounds per game. Dude's a great rim runner. Uh, I know he's wanting to get like $20 million uh, for his next contract per season. I, I don't think that's going to happen. I think maybe somewhere more in that... 12 to 15 million dollar range is probably what he's gonna get but this is a guy who would be an awesome like fourth starter maybe a fifth starter someone who can kind of do that Clint Capella type role like what he's doing with Atlanta maybe like what Andre Drummond Drummond maybe like what Andre Drummond should be doing for the Lakers if uh, his Basketball ability was maybe more in line with what the team wants. Rashawn Holmes, I think, would be a really good addition to a team maybe like Charlotte. Maybe a team like the Mavericks. He's my number one, why aren't people talking about this guy? Uh, the next guy, I don't know why people aren't talking about him. It's Justice Winslow. And I think a lot of this might be one. Uh, he's not an unrestricted free agent. He has a, a, a team option for next year with the Memphis Grizzlies. And that's probably the second reason they're not talking about him because he plays for Memphis and small market team. It did not work out with Memphis. And that's probably like the understatement of the century. He came over in that Andre Iguodala, uh, Jay Crowder, Solomon Hill trade. Dion Waiters was involved. Um, Memphis had to do it because they, they were like, Justice Winslow would be the perfect addition for this team along with John Morant and Jaron Jackson. He's a big playmaker. He's a guy who can get after it defensively. And we, are, we, we think, we're hoping that his shot will come around. Uh, not only did his shot not come around, it was like even worse than, than could be imagined. And add to that, other players really stepped up in front of Justice Winslow in the rotation. Kyle Anderson, for instance. He became the type of player that they were hoping Justice Winslow would be, but Kyle Anderson also had a nice three-point shot that came around too. Things got so bad for Justice Winslow that he didn't even play in the playoffs. Uh, he was relegated to like 10th man, 10th, 11th man the last few games of the season. Like, and if that, he didn't even get off the bench in the first place. I don't see Memphis picking up the Justice Winslow contract extension for next year. But there's, I think there's still hope for Justice. I think he would, I think he would work well with, and I'm, I'm not meaning to just like single out all the big market teams, but I do think he would work well for a team like, uh, the Clippers or the Lakers as that additional playmaker, that additional defender. I don't know, I think it might be a lost cause for his shot. Uh, he shot 18% this most recent season, 18%. Uh, his scoring average was only better slightly than what he did his rookie year, and he was also still pretty injury prone, only playing 26 games. Uh, now only played 37 games the past two seasons. Um, maybe a team can can maybe strike gold with Justice Winslow. I think he's still got a lot of potential. Remember, this was the guy that uh, Danny Ainge offered, well, like four first round picks to get to Charlotte, to get the ninth pick to select Justice Winslow and they wouldn't do it. 
uh, this is the type of resume Justice Winslow had coming into the NBA. So I'm holding out hope for Justice. He's still only 24 years old. Next player, Georges Yang for Utah. This is not a video for casuals, okay? A lot of you may not even know who Nyang is. He uh, just finished his fifth year, I think, really making a name for himself as a three-point shooter and just a guy who can roll out there, help spread the floor, uh, play winning basketball, make smart, smart plays. He is only at the, I think, the minimum as far as his salary is concerned. So this is a guy who I'm looking for a team to get part the give him the partial or maybe the full mid-level exception for his next contract this is a guy who um especially if you're an up-and-coming team uh and you need to fill out that roster with extra shooting and maybe some extra glue guys george Nyang is the type of guy that you want to get and yeah that's Nyang in a nutshell i like him for an up-and-coming team if he does not sign with utah uh the next two players i'm gonna kind of combine together because this is two players for Charlotte, Cody Zeller and Malik Monk. Uh, Zeller is an unrestricted free agent. Malik Monk is going to have uh, his qualifying offer for Charlotte. Let's start with Zeller first. You know, very much like Rashawn Holmes. He's not a guy who's going to shoot threes. He's going to going to be a guy who uh, plays inside, uh, gets some rebounds, uh, tries to play some solid defense. Not as good as Rashawn Holmes. I think Cody Zeller by this point is backup center. He's a he's a good backup center, probably one of the better backup centers in the league. I think it's funny, Cody Zeller, you know, he was the number four pick in the draft. I think that was the Giannis draft. And just look at that draft. You got like Ben McLemore and Nerlens Noel and Michael Carter Williams and Fish. Yeah. His nickname coming into the draft was, uh, or coming into the league was the Big Handsome even though he's not the type of player who would be draft who should have been drafted at number 4 he is the type of player who can give you some solid basketball when he's out on the floor uh, i mean he averaged close to 10 points about 6 7 rebounds mason plumley was able to get his contract with the pistons last year i think zeller is maybe not quite as good as plumley but if we're looking at you know comparisons he's probably plumley level so I would expect uh, Cody Zeller to be another one of those under the radar free agents for next year. And then uh, Malik Monk, his teammate in Charlotte, if not for LaMelo Ball, I think that maybe Malik Monk would have a role on this team. But when you have LaMelo Ball, Terry Rozier, Devontae Graham, who Charlotte also wants to re-sign. I think when you have all those guys, I don't really see a huge role for Malik Monk on this team. He's one of those guys who is a scoring guard. He doesn't play point, even though he's about the size of a point guard of 6'3". And I, I think if memory serves, I think he has like short arms too. So he can't really uh, play bigger than what he is. Like Donovan Mitchell, you know, it has like that 6'7 wingspan. I think uh, uh, Malik Monk has like that 6'3", six, 6'4", six, wingspan, so he can't really play a lot bigger than what he is. But this is the dude who's who's going to go off for like 40 points one night sometimes, and then the next night he's going to have like five with like two of 15 shooting. So, you know, it's really feast or famine with Malik Monk. Uh, he's going to be one of those super sub type guys, very similar to what Derrick Rose was able to do for the Knicks. If that should be what Malik Monk is trying to be, trying to be the post-injury Derrick Rose. And that is something that lots of teams want. And I think there's definitely a role for him in this league. I just don't think it's going to be with Charlotte. One thing I think we can all agree on, though, is that one or all of these guys will end up being overpaid. 